Uh, what's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh McCoogie here, back with Thad Williams. What's uh, up? Going on a Friday. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Get everything out of the way. Rate it five stars. Go to the Collider Podcast channel. This is where this lives. Uh, again, share it with your friends. It's an easy share. Tweet it, Instagram it, whatever. I'm at Josh McCuga. That's at Thad Williams. We got a jam packed show as always. So stick around. Tune in with us. Put down that book. Pick up your podcast device and or computer however you seem to watch whatever we do so eloquently put josh thank you i appreciate yeah. that all right uh okay let's start with norm mcdonald obviously we're oh, huge God. fans we're huge fans norm what are you doing <laughs> what are you doing norm <laughs> we're big norm mcdonald fans we talked about him last week we really want to see the show it After, premieres today yes when this episode's up so i'm gonna go watch a, an episode or two and at some point at the recording of this episode we have no idea if netflix is gonna shelf it or gonna keep it i th- i really don't know at this point i think there's enough buzz around it that's now what i'm saying that they probably are like well maybe people will watch it right it, it, the, the episodes are evergreen they're not topical he didn't he's not he's not recording an episode today no he shot the months ago so they could shelf it if they're mm-hmm. if it's like too hot but they could also say like hey people know about the show a lot now but lots, also lots of free publicity that's what i'm saying thank you and your big mouth norm exactly uh i think the the free press here you know no publicity is bad publicity even though it is it's oh, bad publicity for him i feel so bad for his publicist oh my god just a like a dumpster fire like right? every time Activity. that phone rings the guy his publicist is like no oh, god. not again oh no do? Um, so I will say this. I read the a review and variety of the show. Yeah, I read that Did too. Did you read it? Yeah. And it made me more intrigued about the show. Yeah, because it just seems like Norm is like, oh, someone gave me a lot of money for a show. Right. I don't know what to do with it. No idea. I just thought paid people. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do what I've been doing on my weird podcast, uh, and just do it on Netflix. Here we go. And sure. Uh, again, I can't wait to watch it. I think it's only eight episodes, 30 minutes a piece. Or yeah. Maybe, or ten, ten, I think it's ten, 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 20s. And, and yeah, yeah, it's not that much. Uh, apparently they showed uh, four to critics and one of them was the uh, Jane Fonda one, which I'm looking very much forward Ooh. to because rarely do you see her on a talk show be very organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I'm also looking forward to kind of that documentary, the, the Jane Fonda and Five Acts, whatever documentary. Oh, when's that coming out? I haven't heard about that. I think beginning of October. I just saw the big billboard on Sunset. Yeah. So. Are they using the Jane Fonda song as a, as the theme song? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Do the Jane Fonda. Yeah. yeah. Remember that one? Thanks, 2008. Yeah. You're the yeah. best. Yeah. It was great. <laughs> Ask Roka about it. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Uh, norm, 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 Norm. You're killing me. Yeah. I mean, he already tanked his career once because he couldn't stop talking about stuff. Uh-huh. And now he's just every he was on the View this uh, yesterday, this morning, right before we taped the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, again, foot in mouth. He's apologizing for the apology that he made on Howard Stern because he re- equated it with people with Down syndrome. Hat. It's just on a hat. I, 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 Listen, I like his irreverence, but sometimes, yeah. in, at least in today's climate, you just can't really talk about uh, it. Yeah. You can't really I'm, say much. And, yeah, and there's a difference between making jokes yeah. and being being an edgy com- comedian versus making a heartfelt statement yes. about real world problems yep. and making light of stuff. And he's just – he's having a hard time – with that blurred line, mm-hmm. and it's he's just, always had problems with it. And yes, I think, he has. You know, yeah. In today's world, Norm Macdonald isn't as uh, because we grew up in a society yeah. that was a little more irreverent. Right. Yeah. Now the sensitivity issue doesn't really equate with a Norm Macdonald, and that's unfortunate. Yeah, yeah, it is to it a is. certain extent. I mean, it's not obviously we should be more sensitive about everything. Right. But uh, sometimes comedy in the face of danger or in the face of, you know, overwhelming sadness is a good thing. But in this sense, backing two people that are clearly not shouldn't be backed. Yeah. And then yeah. going and saying Down syndrome because he wanted regardless. Yeah. Let's if. see how the show pans out. Uh, I don't I don't like to go into my political beliefs or things on things. But. Tell, if, 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 I, I, I think my last thought on it is, uh, do you think it's going to get a second season? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I, I, that's my that's my guess. Yeah. Is after all of this, I, I something tells me it will it will go the way of Michelle Wolf's show and Joel McHale's they, show. Did they, they did cancel Michelle's show. Okay, uh, it stumbled out of the gate. I wanted them to give her a little bit more time. Yeah, I don't think Netflix has not cracked the weekly no. talk show format. Hassan's got a new show coming up mm-hmm. this fall yeah. in that same time slot. Okay, uh, that they had given time slot. <laughs> I, I use think, that term loosely in Netflix. World, but I think that uh, Hassan is a lot more easier on the palate than Michelle Wolf. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I, I don't think that people on Netflix necessarily wanted the Joel McHale show. I think they were just like, 
this is a soup. Just yeah. call it the soup. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, know yeah. that the E probably owns the rights, but just or put it back on E. I mean, I don't. Yeah, it was. It, it stumbled it, totally. Uh, it was not the right format for him, and I no. just don't. I don't know. And I and I also think the title, the Joe McHale Show with Joe McHale, is a little too pretentious for a lot of people that are watching Netflix, and they're like, even, "F you." Even for Joe McHale, whose yes. whole shtick is pretentiousness. Yes, like he built a career out of being a dick. Yeah. and leaning into the fact that he will always act like that, on the set or off the set. And yeah. watch watch his interview with Rich Eisen. I think it was like three or four months ago when he it should be on YouTube when he was releasing the Joe McHale Show with Joe McHale. Yeah. Uh, it's awkward. Yeah. It's awkward. Yeah. It's yeah. not great. Ugh. All right, let's move on. Uh, Matthew Weiner, his new trailer for Romanoffs. It's an anthology, so each episode appears to be different. Incredible cast. I liked the trailer. Didn't love it. I'm curious. It it, um, it, it intrigued the hell out of me. Very curious. Like, I yeah. I, I have no idea what... This is a bunch... From everything that I've read, this is a show about a bunch of... Of it's the it's the Russian royalty. Yeah. Well, yeah. but but oh. th- we don't even know. These are people that think that are convinced that they're part of this Russian royal mm-hmm. family line. Mm-hmm. So they've they've built this like self importance yeah. into their psyche. But we don't necess- It doesn't sound like it's clear cut. Like they're not officially members of this royal family. They just they're convinced that they are. Did you did you watch Succession on HBO? I haven't started that yet. Okay. So I'm only four episodes. I keep like watching a couple and then forgetting, and then watching a couple and forgetting. Sure. So I'm five episodes in, four episodes in. I can't remember. But the trailer for Romanos reminded me of when I watched the trailer for Succession. Mm-hmm. In the sense of, okay, another show about a a, a, a super, super elite family yeah. with millions and millions of dollars that is like come down on their luck. And of course, you know, things are right, thrown right, in there right, right, right. with not a likable character in the cast. Yeah. And that is what worries me about Romanovs is that's an anthology. So we're not, we only care about them for one episode. Correct. really. And I'm sure in each episode, just like in a lot of anthologies like this, there'll be a callback to a certain thing with a certain person or right. somebody will walk by in the background <laughs> and you'll be like, Oh, okay, yeah, I get there's going to be, there's, I, I'm assuming there's a through line that we just don't know about yet. Right. Cause I mean, Matt, I feel like Matt Wiener planned this all out and he wants, he's a genius. Yeah, we know this. Yeah. I mean, he is mad men is still one of, if not the great, like most, well-rounded, important television shows of all time. Definitely my top five. Yeah, and I, and I think that I think that it he certainly is trying to tell something, and mm-hmm. I just what I don't know yet is what he's trying to tell, other than these people uh, are full of themselves. Yes, I, like I don't know what his thesis is. Right, I, and I, I I did you you watch Peaky Blinders? No, Maybe no, I Blinders couldn't get guy. through the pilot. Okay, so a huge Peaky Blinders guy, but I think in season three they deal with some backlash from the Russian Revolution because it takes place in uh, that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. That and makes sense. the Bolshevik kind of situation and whatever. Sure. Uh, and I, I got to be honest with you, the Russian royalty are, are a tough to like crowd. <laughs> At least in that show, they were. Fair enough. And I think historically, uh, we never really saw some kind of show that says, you know who's great is those Russian royalty because they are fantastic. So, again, uh, seems like a very uppity kind of a show. Mm -hmm. I I will watch this because Matthew Weiner's track record, Weiner's track record, speaks for itself. Yeah. And the cast is incredible. It's like... Oh, it's like every actress or actor that I love from a show, mm-hmm. they threw in this show. Yeah, and especially Carrie Bichet, who, if you yes. haven't watched Halt and Catch Fire. Then halt what you're doing right now and go watch all four seasons of that show. If I could recommend a show higher than Halt and Catch Fire, I don't think I can. I, It is it is my favorite Laugh uh, at the end. I, that is the I most w- I've ever cried at the end of a, of a finale a, in my life. I was a wreck. A wreck. I was a total wreck. I, I, I was not the only show that made me more of a wreck was the series finale of The West Wing. And that's because I was just seven seasons into The West Wing was just so immersed yeah. with the thought and the feeling that mm-hmm. like the patriotism that that show built inside of me. I agree. Yeah. And not so much the storylines <laughs> because the seventh season was kind of rough, but the, it would, I was just the part of the family was taken away from me. Yeah. 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 That, that was, that was, it was my like mash forever. Yeah. Uh, and uh, like the goodbye episode yes. of MASH, which I also bawled my eyes out during, okay. but for different reasons. <laughs> uh, the, the, the Halt and Catch Fire finale was just perfect. Life changing. And that, the entire fourth the, the it's the only show I've ever watched where each season. Made after a the time season, jump. 
they do the time jump, but after the first season, they changed the lead characters. Yes. The the first season, the focus was on the two male characters uh-huh. and the women that supported them. Yep. And the second season, the women became the leads and the men became the betas. Right. And it was masterful. I yeah. didn't see it coming. I didn't think it was going to work. And it did. Ugh. And the, the, Perfect f- TV. The, the four of them, the, those four actors, uh, Bechet, uh, Mackenzie McNary. Davis, Scoot McNary, and, and Lee, Pace. Uh, Lee Pace. Just and and Toby Huss yes. was the unsung fifth, the fifth member of that of that crew. He I was agree. The, he was the fifth Beatle, and was the glue of that show. I agree. I agree. Uh, but okay, so Romanovs, we, dig- we are we, we are medium. But uh, I will digress on Halt and Catch Fire any day of the exactly. week. Exactly. Uh, okay. Let's go through this quickly. Yeah. Uh, there's some American Gods drama now. I we talked a lot about American Gods on TV Talk. The incantation prior to this. 1.0? One, season 1? Season 1.0. It was a two and a half year season. Yeah. Um, and I I was mediocre on the show to begin with. I was kind of just, every episode was a very slow burn that made no sense to me. I was not very keen on the show. I thought the finale was a total waste. I thought the whole season was a waste. And now we're seeing that there's drama that they they haven't approved, a finale script. They're now just reshooting a lot of stuff they've already shot, and they're, they're six weeks behind. Yeah. Uh, He's, I think, it, on the seventh. I think they're on the seventh draft of the season two finale script, and they've basically welcome to the too many cooks kitchen. Yeah, dun, dun, too dun. many cooks. Yeah, too many cooks. <laughs> uh, yeah, and they apparently have like locked the the uh, the showrunner out of the room. Like awesome. he's. He's not allowed on set. He's not allowed in the writer's room. He isn't fired, but he's not running things. It just sounds like a complete dumpster fire. Yes. And maybe some dumpster fires do produce really good art. And, and some poison you with smoke. And, yeah. And so it's possible It's possible that the season two finale will be everything that the fans want. Yeah. And that they will figure it out. I don't know, and I based on my season one prediction. I'm not. I, I'm not excited about the show. I didn't watch it. I don't. I don't. I understand watch it's a, a book. Of, it's a Neil Gaiman thing. I don't and have stars. Like, you, they <laughs> Does anyone at me. have stars? I do because I have everything. Uh, all the channels. When when they gave me my 18 to verse, they were like, "Here's everything. This is what you owe me." And I was like, "Well, okay." And they were like five years, and I was like, "That seems like a deal." <laughs> um, the uh, the American Gods, though, uh, as far as being excited about something, it's my same level of excitement as I was for Preacher. I'm like, Ooh, okay, yeah. Preacher, here we go. And I've n- I have not watched any of season three of Preacher. I'm totally done with that show. It's fine. I wasted two years of my life with it. Not two years, but I mean two seasons with it. American Gods, if I go through the first episode and I'm not like brought back in or something, it gets me, I'm done. It's fine. Uh, for the people that love American Gods and read the book, fantastic. Uh, we just probably won't be into it on this show. Yeah. That's all. Sorry. Uh, Catherine Langford from 13 Reasons Why got cursed. Uh, got cursed? Got Jeez. cast and cursed. That was tough. Dad, we get there? Uh, yeah, we got through it. We got through it. Uh, cursed, it's a Frank Miller uh, project. I mean, it's a graphic novel that he yeah. did. Yeah. It's, I, I really like her in 13 Reasons Why, and she is not really the main character per se. In the first season, obviously, it's all about her, but it kind of more follows the dude than it does her. I would like to see her branch out into something that I haven't seen her before, and uh, as something I've... I will stand on a podium and tell you that I really like the first Sin City. I didn't love it, but I re- no, I really the, enjoyed a, the first. It's Sin really City. entertaining. And yeah. at, I was just reading. Uh, this is actually an original story that Miller co-created, okay. and they're going to write a book, a companion graphic novel. Love it. To go along with the series, so the series comes first, the graphic novel comes after, and okay. Miller's going to do the illustrations for the companion book. I like it. Which is interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. like a, a reimagining of the King Arthur legend. Yeah, that's what, and that got me intrigued as well because there's IP and it's not, yeah. you know, it's a, a sort of thing. But again, I'm looking to seeing what she does because her character in 13 Reasons Why is very one note right. to a certain extent. It's very teen mm-hmm. angsty. Mm-hmm. It's very mm-hmm. just that. Uh, I understand it's a very serious subject, but I'm looking forward to seeing her do to branch out here and do something else. Let's talk. Okay, we had some premieres this Sunday. We talked about it last week. It was a big Sunday. We had Kidding on Showtime, yep. the Jim Carrey show. Mm-hmm. We also had the premiere of Shameless. Let's talk about Shameless first, and then we can go into Kidding. Yeah. I was a little kind of underwhelmed to a certain extent. My, my bi- I, and I think it's been a problem with Shameless for a very long time yeah. is uh, th- the grip of reality. They're, Fiona and Fiona's storylines always seem to be s- grounded in, in real life, yeah. real life problems, uh, 
real relationships, real struggles with right. uh, finances and getting out of getting out of the lips south side. Have to so to a certain extent. Yeah, yeah, okay. Lips, lips, always on the edge for me. Okay, and I feel like Frank is always in totally in left field. Yeah. That being said, William H Macy is incredible. He's great. E- in every single scene he does, he's finding something new to bring to that character, yes. which I love. But his storylines are wildly. Wildly ridiculous. Absurd. Like they yeah. just they get they get crazier and crazier and crazier. The end of season eight ended with him diving in a porta potty to escape the cops. Yeah, hiding inside of a porta potty, and now we're finding him. Uh, uh, we're we're giving finding the him entire in, school STDs. Yeah, yeah, ba- banging banging all the uh, the school desperate moms. housewives. Yes, correct. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I enjoy the show so much and it moves along so well. I've never been a fan of Ian. I never like his storylines. I don't like, I don't like the character. Yeah. I'm sure the actor is a nice guy. I just, I, I really don't like anything they've ever done with Ian or Debbie. I don't like any of their storylines yeah, ever. Yeah, Debbie's always been hard. Just, and... It's just hard to take. I always love Liam. I love Carl. Carl, Carl is incredible. And I'm really curious to see where, where we go with, 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 100%. with, 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 with Carl's time at the military yes. academy yeah but yeah no ian ian is hard ian ian straddles that thing where like you think he's gonna have a grounded storyline and it's gonna be an interesting an interesting take at the perry like <laughs> the audio fans you didn't get that yeah, but if, if, you're, if you're on video you're you're you get it you're, you get it you get it um <laughs> but if you uh like like last season or the season a couple seasons ago when he had the relationship with the trans oh, yeah. the trans person it was a really interesting storyline that they hadn't delved into no. and and I was curious to see how they were going to navigate those waters and sure. I thought they did a really good job of it and then he became gay Jesus yeah. and started blowing shit up and it was just no, this whole it's thing. So and I love field. the fact that I love the fact so that everybody ridiculous. is telling Fiona not do to like do that. this and Fiona in typical form just. Is always just does what she wants to do. And exactly. It, it gets a little frustrating. Do, I will say the funniest part of the episode is Kevin and V training their kids like dogs. Uh, yeah, that it's was hysterical. Pretty hysterical. And that yeah. they're another relationship where I always appreciate their their storylines, yeah. but they skew so far into the absurd Doesn't sometimes yeah. that it's just like, all right, yeah. it, it, we're watching we're watching a cartoon ninety yeah. percent of the time. Uh, and I think that Fiona is honestly the one character that's not on the same page as everyone else. Yep. She's trying to do drama. Everyone else is doing r- slapstick comedy. Yep. And so I'm curious to see if once she le- exits the show, if the tone of the show will improve because yep. it will be even. Yes. I think right now it's wildly uneven between her storylines and everyone else's. 100%. So if she goes and I'm – they're breaking the season into two and I'm wondering if she's going to disappear at the end of the midseason finale. And then what, come back near the end? Or? Well, no, I think she, I mean, That's she's, it. she's gone for the show. So I'm if they write her out at the midseason finale yeah. as opposed to the end of the series. Like does she walk up in the sunset with the Irish guy? What? Maybe. I, I, or like does, does she die in a hail of bullets? I have no <laughs> – I have no – no idea where it's gonna go. <laughs> like she robs a bank. Fiona! She robs the bank to save Ian, yeah. and then just like gets shot by the cops. Her old her old boyfriend, who's a cop, oh, comes yeah. back, and he's the one that kills I her. Seen him in forever. No, he pops in every now and then. Yeah. The, the the blonde kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I'm wondering if without Fiona in the picture, if the tone of the show will improve because it's just gonna be a, a one or hour it comedy. An anchor, and it's a it's a floating or, boat. Or, yeah, or it's just a rudderless ship. Right. Yeah, it's okay. one of the two. All right. Uh, let's talk kidding. Woo! Okay. Well, that was something. <laughs> okay. Here's my problem with a lot of shows like this. Okay. Is that I don't think a person like Jim Carrey exists. I don't think this situation exists. You mean like Fred Pickles or do you mean like Jim Carrey? Because I don't know if Jim Carrey as a human exists. Right. No, I'm talking was... like the Fred Pickles, the whole situation. Yeah, so yeah. So you're telling me somebody like uh, Judy Greer, yes. who seems to have her feet in everything, married this guy. Now, I understand that. You have, yeah, because that's his ex. Right, right, basically. right, 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 right. What I'm saying is that they that they are writing just for weirdness to be weird is what I think. Yeah, yeah. There's and I a, have problem with that when it's so uh, just it, 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 we can we can write like this and we can talk like this because we are smarter than everybody. And I don't think that exists. <laughs> I don't yeah. think those people exist. That's fair. I think that's I I. I I appreciated some of the absurdity in this mm-hmm. series. I think there were a few moments that threw that were that were 
felt like they were crazy just because Showtime said make it crazy. Yeah. Uh, or Michelle Gondry just wanted to do something ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I I like the dynamic between Carrie and Catherine Keener and, um, and yeah, I Frank like, Langella. Yeah. I like the, I like that tr- triangle. I think Judy Greer is always entertaining. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious from a casting perspective where the show is going to go. Yeah. Like I, I finished the episode and I saw that Previous the second week. Well, I saw that the second episode was already available. Oh. But I didn't watch it because okay. I had to watch Shameless. Oh, it's one of those show. It's one of Got those it. like Showtime jump ahead show things. Show go or whatever. Uh, but I, and I, and it, part of me was like, oh, I kind of want to see where this is going. Okay. But I didn't because it was just it left such a weird taste in my it mouth. It did. It really did. I was eating. I was eating dinner while I was watching it, <laughs> and like I'm, I've got. Did like, the missus watch with you? No, okay. no, she was at work, and okay. so I, I had like half a pork chop in my, in my mouth as I'm watching some of this stuff. And sometimes I'm like, oh, it's funny, or oh, that's okay, mm. all right. And like it, it seems like a nice it cake. ends like like the way it sets up the end was interesting. I'm really curious. To see how far they delve into his anger issues, yeah, because they keep they 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 kept hinting like strong visual cues that he has like deep seated anger right. anger issues, even though he's this sweet and wholesome guy. He's using the same voice that he used for a lot of uh, Andy Kaufman, Andy Kaufman yeah. uh, which is a little off putting just to hear again, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, I'm, he has the same posture and everything as the Andy Kaufman thing. Like it yeah. feels like a retread. I, I don't know. I, this show just doesn't appeal to me. That's fair. That's fair. You know I, I, mean? I, I feel like I need to give it one to two more viewings. To, Should I? I'm curious to see what the second episode is. Okay. Like I'm really curious to see where they're setting the story up, or if it's just going to be like the tale of the week, like whatever his theme. On the on the kids show is mm-hmm. is going to be the theme of the episode, or if there's a larger storyline that they're trying to get at with his relationship with his family and the loss that he's dealing with. Okay, but I, like if it doesn't hook me after two or three, I'm definitely not going to watch all no, ten yeah, or I whatever. I don't need to. But I did see uh, uh, Carrie was on Bill Maher last Friday. Okay, uh, and it was the most grounded and entertaining version of Jim Carrey that I've seen in public in a very long time. Okay. So that interview was worth watching. Got it. I, I liked that interview of him as the human a lot more than the series premiere. Okay. Uh, quick, uh, totally off topic subject, but have you ever seen a normal interview with Kate McKinnon? Uh, no, <laughs> no. I, I feel like, I feel like most comedians have to go, they have to be absurd and goofy in all their right. interviews. And she seems like one of those people Gotcha. that like every, everyone's like, well, could you, you do it? Could you do the interview in a voice? Yeah. What would Hillary Clinton say to well, this I question? Just, I, yeah. I, I just, um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, she, she, she's, uh, another one like that. Uh, I love her SNL stuff. Yeah, I love yeah. when she's acting. Yeah. 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 But her in person is kind of like Jim Carrey in the show. It's like, does this person exist? Kristen Wiig does the same thing in interviews. Sometimes. Farrell does it a lot, where it's like, sometimes they, like, they... they but they're more palatable, I think. Yeah. Is that... Uh, I love Kristen Wiig's interviews. I, think, I love Will I think Farrell's we've seen interviews. them more. I think okay. we've seen more of them, and we've seen a little bit different range. Yeah. I love Kate McKinnon on SNL, and she's I, definitely their lead performer right now. Yeah. Uh, I really but like I, Ghostbusters. I, but I feel like her. I feel like her. She's being boxed into a one or two different shtick. specific characters, specific shtick. I've heard she's pretty good in Spy Who Dumped Me. I did which not is, see. That. I didn't see it either. I might watch it like when it hits Netflix. It's definitely going to be one of those on HBO movies that Amanda and I will be sitting around on a Sunday night. She'll be like, "Ooh, the Spy Who Dumped Me," and I'll fall asleep, and she'll finish it and tell me what happened. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, no, no I'm, I've been there. Okay, I've been there. Right. Uh, real quick. I know you didn't finish it, but yeah, I don't. watched I watched episode two of Always Sunny, uh-huh. uh, and I was telling you before we went on the air, I think every year they have one or two episodes that become classics. Yeah. Last night's episode, to me, is going to be one of those episodes. I love that idea. Okay. It was... Can't wait to watch. Hysterical. Okay. Uh, speaking of a show that we both love, uh, let's quick... We have a ton to get to today, especially like long-winded things. Let's just real quick you, talk me, about... You, me, long-winded? Or what are you talking about? <laughs> are you about? kidding me? The genius of Better Call Saul. Oh, my God. Which in the rundown, which you guys can't see, I spelled call C-A-U-L and Saul S-A-L-L. That's a little invert. The, the old invert. I like, I like that. I like <laughs> yeah. that. Uh, okay. I realized something this week on Better Call Saul, yes. which I love, is that half of the show, we are figuring out when exactly Jimmy McGill becomes Better Call Saul. Correct. Okay? And the other half of the show, we are figuring out when exactly Walter White becomes Walter White. Because we'll never see Walter White. 
Yeah. But we know that the empire is building to the point where they find Walter White. Okay, I see where you're. I Do you see, see what, what you're saying? saying? Like you, you are one's you... a prequel and one is a prequel, but right. they're two different prequels. Okay, okay. So are you saying that you think this like the at the finale, like it's going to dovetail into a specific season of Better Call Saul? Because right I now, think we're still like I, I I think we're still in the timeline. I I think we're still like four years away from from Walter White from Walter. Because I I, think... I thought that they I think we're still in like 2003. Okay. Because flip phones are still – we haven't seen yeah. a smartphone in someone's hand yet. Yeah. And the first iPhone, I think, was 2007. But also they used a lot of flip phones and Breaking Bad mostly because they're burners. But yeah. what, I'm, I, what I'm saying is I think that right now, because we don't know Saul Goodman, we don't know anything, that eventually what's going to happen? Because we've already seen the crossover of Saul – or you know Jimmy McGill and Mike Ehrmantraut. We haven't seen any crossover really between Gus Fring – and Jimmy McGill. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that and and there's a and there's a, yet another great cameo from a Breaking Bad actor that starts the, like, his body. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we start to see like we're 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 getting peppered with more and more people in that world. Yes. And so I think that there will be like a, a, t- a everything will come to a head. Yes. And I don't know how many seasons they're planning to run this show. I mean, this is season this is four? four, and we know there's going to be a season five. Right. I could see them ending at five. I was going to say five, or maybe end at six, because Breaking Bad ended at six, right? Wasn't Breaking Bad six? <sighs> I don't remember. Uh, yeah. It might have been five, but five. Okay, they, 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 they did five seasons. Okay, so I think that sixty-two episodes. But what I'm really loving about this because this could be so. This show could be so boring. But it is a totally an origin story, yeah. told out in incredible storytelling. Yeah, and I think that the 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 initial conceit of making it not just Jimmy's story but also Mike's story yep. was brilliant because we're, we're watching two origin stories, yep. and they're going at different paces. But also Gus's story because if you well, watch yeah, Breaking Gus, Bad, Gus is, you see how he got into it, right, 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 and now we see how he's climbing. Up, up it, up the ladder, yeah. and we're seeing, the, and the same thing with the Salamancas yep. and Nacho. I mean, he's going to be the most tragic character in this series because we know he doesn't show up in Breaking Bad. Right, we just so don't so, know. When. We just don't know what's going to happen. But right. I'm assuming. I mean, he wasn't really in this episode at all. No, so. he hasn't been. Like we, we, we focused a lot on of on him throughout the season. He's had like standout scenes, right. but he's kind of like peppered throughout. Yeah. Uh, and uh, spoiler alert: I think he's. Playing a big bad character in Spider Man Two because he because he had that cameo as uh, the Scorpion guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, if you had spoiler, if you haven't seen Spider Man Homecoming, my bad. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you? Which do? really didn't give anything away. No. You said a Spider Guy in a jail, so it's not yeah, a big deal. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, he kills Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> Spider Man is dead. Spider Man died in. Spoiler alert: Spider Man dies in the first act. Of Spider-Man, Spider-Man Homecoming, correct? Yeah, Dead, totally. Yeah. The rest of the movie is just about uh, uh, Michael Keaton. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, anyways, yeah, it's just it's just a sad tale about a construction worker. Yes. Uh, in New York City, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think Better Call Saul the the way that they're the way that they're moving the pace mm-hmm. along with the story of how Mike and Gus are working together and seeing I, we were talking about this earlier the. We knew that that massive cook room under the laundromat, we knew it existed. Yes. We've seen it before. We never really understood how it came to be. Right. And we didn't know how the hell you could really pull that off. It felt almost like too good to be true. Like it felt like a created for television moment yes. when it premiered in, Be- in Breaking Bad. Right. Because you went from but that's the, the thing real, is- you went from the realistic van, yes. the meth van and, and uh, the home cook right. to this like super facility. The super, that's why I'm saying is I think because, you know, he finishes the, the he's going to have to finish this. I would imagine at the beginning of this season or at the end of this season or the beginning yeah. of this season or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then he brings in Gail and Walter. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we've already and we and we saw Gale. Gale, we saw Gail a couple weeks ago. So that's why I'm saying I think that the, the that the mobile meth lab is actually. But my... we knew when he brought when he brought Walt in, Gail had been working in there for a while. Oh right. Gail had been in there for a while, working in there for a while, and had gotten I think because he mentions it he he's trying to get to like seventy percent pure or something, right. and it isn't until Walt hits the scene with his 92% or whatever crazy blue, blue meth that's like 
taking the world by storm. Yes. It isn't until that and his relationship with the Salamancas that Gus brings him back. Right. So I think I think something's going to happen towards the end of the season. The the the, the facility is going to get built. Yeah. Uh, those Germans are going to have a world of hurt. Right. Something tells me. But uh, something tells me Mike's going to take care of some business. Uh-huh. But I think I think Gail is going to get working, and then. Uh, something's going to happen where Gus and the Salamancas kind of part ways for a while and yeah. they have like a, a, a truce. Because you see in the next episode, you see this. Yeah, we saw the finger. Yeah, yeah, we saw the finger starting to move and the fact that Gus has been checking up on I him. I know, that Gus monologue. That, that monologue. I mean, that monologue was literally like, hey, Gian- Giancarlo, do you, would you like an Emmy nomination? <laughs> Because I, I I've got this I've got this stack of there paper you go. I've got the stack of paper sitting in my uh, drawer here. Yeah. If you would like an Emmy nomination, yeah. I can make that happen. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was and and the stuff happening with Jimmy and the cell phones and uh, he keeps getting pulled yeah. back into his world. Yeah. and and then the tr- I think the tragic stuff. It's hopeful right now, but the stuff that's happening with uh, with Kim. Yeah. In, I'm just I'm I'm getting I'm getting so nervous about the dis like the dissolvement, uh, dissolvement 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 of Kim and Jimmy. I, yeah, I, I'm, it's it's, it's not going to end nervous. well. No, of course, not. and it's going to be very very sad. And when he has that 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 interaction with Howard, yeah, uh, who there you go, yeah, use it. Who will always for me? He will always be the the man that stole <laughs> uh, stole Kelly Kapowski from Zach Morris. <sighs> But uh, anyways, Professor Lasky was that him? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He had like kind of bleachy blonde yeah. hair. Son of a, um, you know, he's a huge Steeler fan. That I know. Oh, the what actor. do you know? All right. Um, uh, let's, yeah. All, what, what else can we say other than if you're not watching Better Call Saul, what are you doing? If missing. you if you are a fan of Breaking Bad in any stretch of the imagination, you will love this show. Yeah. If you watch the first season and you think it's a little slow, wait. Yeah. Let it let it burn. Let it let it, let it remember the first six episodes of Breaking Bad. I still know people that never finished Breaking Bad because they hated the first six episodes. Yeah. Yeah. It it takes time. Yep. Vince Gilligan is not writing a mile a minute action fest. He's, he's not writing, Aaron Sorkin. No, he's and and he's not Michael Bay. He's right. not writing the the explosions you see in the promos do not happen. Over and over and over again. It takes yeah. time yep. and it will be satisfying. You just have to get there. Yep. So if you're not doing it, take take a couple weekends, binge through those first few seasons. Enjoy the binge too. Yeah, it's, it's a great it, binge. It's, oh, I love that show so yeah. much. All right, uh, real quick, I want to give Collider.com a shout out. Woo! Allison Keene, Vinny Mancuso, Haley Fouch, a lot of the TV writers over there are doing an amazing job. Yes. So keep up the great work. Uh, they did a, a really cool article this week nine video games that should be made. <coughs> I'm sneezing. <laughs> This is why we shoot live to tape, everybody. My allergies have been killing me the me last couple too. of weeks. Brutal. Um, nine video games that should be made into movies, and they had some awesome ones in there. And you know me, I'm more of a vintage side scroll video game guy. And I've always been under the impression that a great game or would... Nine, nine games that should be made into TV shows, not movies. Sorry, that should be made yeah, into yeah, TV yeah, yeah, shows. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. We're uh, on TV talk. I know. I'm an idiot. It's okay. Uh, and so uh, I always thought what a great a great TV show would be Contra. <laughs> I, the two brothers in the jungle and action just I mean, yeah, I mean it wasn't Contra kind of based off of all of like the Rambo style basically like like movies that were popular at the time. We need, but we need, we haven't had an action do, yeah. show in a jungle where like they're chasing people down. Like, it could be like Strike Back. Yes. from Cinemax. Strike Back was good. I yeah, watched. I, re- Strike I remember Back. you. you yes. I remember you telling me about that. Yeah. Uh, but go check that article out again. People at Collider dot com doing incredible work. Yeah. over there. Uh, let's go to this story. So uh, Tyler Myers, a fan on Twitter, and he's, uh, he's been a Schmoes fan forever. He's a great tweeter, good dude. Tweeted us a list of the of TV guides. Top 100 shows right now. Yes. Okay. Now remember, this is TV Guide. Yeah, my mom. They have a different. Subscribes. They have a different set of viewers mm-hmm. than maybe we do. Yep. Their readership, their their listenership is slightly off. Yep. They start strong though. Number I know one. You, I love the Good Place. I, I know it's, you love it's the a, Good it's Place. A very, it's a very high ranking, but they did rank Good Place as their favorite show right now, which okay. I can't fault them for that. It's it's it, it's subjective, yes. but that is a fantastic show. I don't disagree. I just watched, they, they they put out a little sneak peek. How many seasons are we on? Is this season four? This is going into season three. Three, okay. And they just put out a sneak peek for the premiere, the one hour premiere, uh, where we get to see how Michael 
fixes the timeline a bit. Okay. And it was very fun. It's okay. like it's like a minute and a half, yeah. but it was entertaining. Love it. Okay. Uh, I can't wait for that show to come I, back. I agree that it's good, but it's not number I one. Wouldn't, I wouldn't put it number one yeah. either, but, you know, it fine. Okay. We're going to go through this quickly, but I will say Atlanta at two, it's properly placed. It should be in the top five, 100%. Sure. Better Call Saul MC, we just, I mean, we yeah. just talked at length sure. about it. It's fantastic. Here's where it starts to skew, skew a little bit different different audience. One Day at a Time is a three camera laugh track show. I don't think that really has any place in the top 25. Yeah, but I that's mean, just me. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've watched two, three episodes of the show. I understand it. It's good. It, it takes a, a look at a different One Day at a Time with a, an immigrant family, uh, first generation kind of a situation which basically was the original One Day at a Time to, to a certain extent. Congratulations for One Day at a Time. Do I think this should be number four? No. No. And that no, has nothing to do – I'm not a racist or anything against this. I just don't think it's funny enough Josh to be – Josh is a racist. <laughs> be funny enough to read five Josh ahead of racist. something like Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, yeah. They ranked at 38. You are bonkers. That is bonkers. First of all, Killing Eve, everybody raged about it last season. It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's not five. It's fine. Did you watch it? No. It's fine. No, Sorry for I didn't yelling. See it yet. Game of Thrones being number six and being beat out by one day at a time is fucking ludicrous. They put Winona Earp over Marvelous Mrs. Mrs. Maisel. Here, let's go through the shows that are better than Marvelous Mrs. Maisel in the eyes of TV Guide. Okay, we just went through six of them. Uh, Stranger the, Things, yep. it's good. Yep. It's not better than Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Big Little Lies could tie Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It was a very powerful show and I actually enjoyed it, but I don't think it's better. <laughs> this is Different. us on NBC. Fine. It's Season good. one, sure. Fantastic. Season two, uh, yeah. I cried a lot at the Super Bowl episode. The rest of the show kind of got a little too schmaltzy near the end. Yep. Still a solid show. Should be in the top 25. Not better than Marvelous and Ms. Maisel. Bob's Burgers. The entire internet loves Bob's Burgers. I get it. They yell at me about it all the time. It is a very funny show. It's it's animated, so I skip shows all the time when it comes to animated. Do I think it's better than Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? No. <laughs> Jane the Virgin. I haven't watched it since season one, but it's a novella inside of a novella. Good. Yeah. Not better than Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> Queer Eye. Powerful show. Yeah. Very well done. It's it, The it, tear ducts it's opened. It's very hard. I think it's – the re one of the reasons that this list is so out of whack yes. is they're ranking scripted and unscripted – together mm -hmm. and I think it's very hard to equate the, like just like it's kind of hard to equate an animated series with a live action yes. series or even a comedy with a drama yep. there's a reason the Emmys splits all these all these Correct. things because it's very hard to to hold up a Bob's Burgers and a Queer Eye right. and Maisel and Game of Thrones and say like which is better yes because they're all they're all really 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 good yep and they're all very, very, very different. Yes. And and so I have to give them a little bit of I'm just going to go in until yeah. 38 and tell you which ones aren't <laughs> as good as Mar Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Keep going. Keep okay? going. Keep going. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. No. You know how I feel about no. musicals. It's the worst. Dear White People, I tried to watch this. Uh, the first three episodes, I gave it a three-episode test. I just don't think it was meant for me, and I, I understand. I'm a white guy. It's what it, it is. What it is, and, and it's I'm, definitely meant for you. It's it, it it's a letter white to people. you. Uh, I watched it. I think it's just because it's college. I don't know. It just it didn't really sit with me that what it didn't like. You, it's go been with a me. while since you were in college. Yeah, I think it, it. I think it might have been. It's past me. Just yeah, past me. It's past. It's past your time. Black Mirror, great. Uh, a revolutionary show. The best anthology series in the history of television, in my opinion. Yeah. Whatever. It's not better than Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> Glow on Netflix might tie that, Mrs. Maisel. I would say that's a. In, in, Those and, are my two favorite shows on TV and right now. Season two of Glow was yeah. insanely good. Oh my god! One of the incredible. best season twos of yeah. a, a, a of a binging show that I've seen in a very long time. Yes, and I'm really hoping that Maisel season two tops Maisel uh, season one. Well, Amy Paladin has never let me down yeah. in all the seasons of Gilmore Girls. So yeah. even the last one. Even no, I didn't watch that. I won't. Okay. I don't. All I don't right. do All reboots. Right. That come on. I only reboots a TV talk. <laughs> uh, Handmaid's Tale. I don't think that season two held up nearly as good to season one. Yeah. Uh, it, again, powerful show. I think it's very timely, but it's starting to really love itself so much that they they're thinking they can do whatever the f they want, and yeah. we're gonna watch it. Yep. Westworld HBO. Hate it. <laughs> season two is really good. Okay. Thanks, season two man. is really good, but it's not better than Mrs. I don't Maisel. care about robots. I know. I Sorry. know. I know. I know. Better Things, fantastic show. Yeah. Not better than Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, but it's close. Rick and Morty, really impossible to compare to, but Rick and Morty <laughs> is genius, but you have to be on it, Dan it, Harmon's level. It's a total. It's a it's weird. Yeah. yeah. Way out there. 
I, I made my brother watch the first couple episodes of Morty. He's like, I, what is this? I can't see your brother really no. getting into that. No. But it's, it, it, it's, it's an acquired taste. But if you like it, yeah. it's fantastic. 21, Veep. Veep at 21 is the stupidest thing I've read since yeah. 38 Marvelous Mrs. No, Maisel. Veep, Veep, is, Veep is a top 10 show of all time. Veep is one of the funniest sitcoms, if you can even call it a sitcom. It's one of the funniest comedies that I've seen ever to hit the screens. It's ever. It, 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 it is Iannucci's best work. It is Julia Louis-Dreyfus's best work. It is uh, other than... My girl, it is <laughs> it is the best best Beta work. Salt and fuss. <laughs> but yes. it it, it I, I I okay. Veep is twenty one. What's twenty two, Josh? Okay, twenty two is an incredible show that needs to be watched. It's Vanderpump Rules. I think they just got confused because it's it's in alphabetical order reverse <laughs> is what I think. They're like, oh, oh through, wait, uh, oh, uh, if you want to get pissed about Veep, what's at twenty three? Barry is beaten by Vanderpump Rules. What? what? Get the hell out of here. Barry was maybe the best new show of last year. Uh, yeah. Next to Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Okay. The Crown, great. Put it up higher. It's way better than Way better than this. Nathan for you might be the most underrated comedy ever next I to the I do love that they that TV Guide put Nathan for you in the top 25. Yes. I think that is that shows that there's at least one Redemption. There's one editor in this in the TV Guide room that's like, guys. Jerry. Guys. Jerry, it's Dave. Guys. Call Sarah. Tell Beth. If they don't put Nathan for you somewhere, that they put Vanderpump Rule. Great British Breakoff. I've never watched it. I'm uh, sure it's good. I I've watched a bunch with my wife, and they changed the hosts okay. in the most recent season that just hit Netflix. Doesn't work. And literally, it, we started, and we both went, "No, oh no." They got rid of the cute old lady. She's and they, the best. Yeah, and and the two funny women that were the hosts, oh, and they got like this weird guy that looks like he was a rocker in the '60s. It's uh, I don't know what they were thinking. Okay. It's just all wrong. We literally we turned it off and put an old episode on. So what the hell is at 27? Claws on TNT. My mom the Santa watched Claus? Claus. No, it's about a nail salon oh, and Claus. meth running. I remember that one. Yeah, yeah, remember yeah. Remember we had to do that review? Uh -huh. It does it. This yeah, is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, Insecure yeah. on HBO is good. Vita on start. Never even heard of it. Uh, Star Trek Discovery, not better than Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Mindhunter no. is and pretty I love, awesome. You know I love Star Trek, and it's not better than Maisel. Winona Earp. I mean, uh, really? What, look at the, the, the promo picture of Winona Earp. Looks like a soft core on Netflix. <laughs> But see, it's or like, on Cinemax. I'm but sorry. But see, it, it, it's not Wyatt Earp. It's Winona. Is she? It, it, it's like Winona Judd. Yes, as Wyatt Earp. I as get Wyatt it. Earp. American uh, Vandal. Love it. Love it. Uh, the new season starts tomorrow. It does start tomorrow. New season uh, or today? Today. Yeah. Today, if you're if you're listening to this when it comes out, uh, Blackish, fantastic. The yeah. Terror, actually, never, very good. Never I heard of it. Really like the Terror on AMC. It aired the same time as uh, that show. The other show I was watching on AMC. I always forget what I was watching. Anyway. Uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine, not better than Marvelous and Maisel. Still funny. The Bold Type, never even heard of it. And then finally, at thirty eight, the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel TV Guide. Burn all your uh, burn your issues. Just yeah. burn them. Yeah. This is absurd. I'm sorry I yelled so much, but that's where we got to. It just goes to show that we're better. These than lists everybody. are really, really subjective. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I will I will say is that I just scrolled to the top again, and they they took a picture of they have like an animated title here. Yes. And they they put they have Michael Burnham from Star Trek Discovery standing next to John Oliver in a Star Trek uniform. Yeah. Uh, which is a great and the little fact image. That, that last week tonight isn't in the top twenty or whatever is bonkers too. And all they, right. They, they okay whatever. Here this we is, go. All right. We're going to do something we said we were going to do next week or this week. Next week? This, this week. week. We're going to do it this week. We're doing it now. We're doing it right now. We're doing it right now. And so, we're going to do it fast. And we're going to do it fast. And we're going to do this for a lot of different sh – but we're going to go HBO, Showtime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cinemax so, will be quick. Uh, <laughs> stars. We're going to do all of these because we're going to – we're on HBO Go right now. We're going to go alphabetically to say yes or no. See it or skip it. Correct. Two dope queens. See it. Okay, never watched it. I haven't either. All deaf comedy. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's some good ones in okay. there. Okay, yeah. Uh, Angels in America. Never watched it. Oh, you've never seen? It? Oh, watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Angry Boys. Yes. Incredible. Didn't see it. No. Uh, Animals. Very underrated. I never saw it. Liked it. Okay. Ballers. No. <laughs> the only fan of Ballers is uh, is Elizabeth Warren, and I don't understand <laughs> it. Uh, you skipped Arliss. 
Arliss isn't on my HBO. It's not go. on your list. No. Nope. Oh, it's on my page. But all right, uh, Arliss is fantastic. Arliss is great. That's a watch. That's an old. It's an old. It's an old favorite. Band of Brothers. Ten episodes of perfect TV. Yes. Watch Barry. Yes. Yes. Big Little Lies. Yes. yes. Big Love. The first few seasons. Yes. Okay. First okay. few seasons. Boardwalk Empire. Yes. yes. Bored to death. Yes. 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 The Brink. No. 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 Carnivale or Carnival? I never saw it. Me neither. Yeah. Okay. I heard really good things. If you watch Carnival, let us know if you liked yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Casual Vacancy. Never saw it. Not familiar. The Comeback? Very entertaining. Comeback is very good. I love Lisa Kudrow. Crashing? Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Nah. Okay. Nah, not for me. Curb? Yes. 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 Deadwood? Never got through it. N- me either. Couldn't get through it. Uh, I love Timothy Oliphant. Obviously, lo- yeah. Defiant ones. Hard yes. Mm-hmm. Dennis Miller live. Eh, it's, it's a little dated now. Yeah. I feel like, but sure. I, mean, like I like Dennis Miller, but it's a talk show from the nineties. The Deuce. Uh, the season premiere. This. This. Uh, it's good. I don't know where it's going, but I, I think it's a soft yes. Okay, I haven't seen it. Divorce? No, can't stand Jer- Jessica Parker. Uh, you know, I've actually seen a few episodes and they did make me laugh. Okay, but I haven't watched the whole season. And I love Thomas Hayden Church. He's great. But just something about Sarah Jessica Parker. That's fair. That's fair. I think That's she fair. just ruined my college because every girl was so obsessed with Sex in the City that if you did something like, oh my god, you totally did like whatever his name was in that, I'm like, oh god, here we go. Yeah. Uh, Eastbound and Down, hard yes. Oh my god, yes. It's the first season may. Yeah. Incredible. Enlightened, I never watched. I, I've heard really good things. I never okay. got into it. I love uh, Laura Dern, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Entourage, yeah. Uh, fine. When it, if you if you have uh, nothing else better to do... If you legitimately do, have nothing better nothing to do. Nothing better to do. Family Tree, underrated one season television. Eh, I didn't like it. Okay. I didn't like it. Five Days, never saw. Uh, no, I didn't see it. It was like a murder mystery thing. Okay. Flight of the Concords. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Funny or Die presents Hits and Misses. It was too many misses for me okay. as a series. Uh, Game of Thrones? Never heard of it. Ah, hmm. That's a hard yeah. Generation Kill, underrated. Uh, Generation Kill, I was I was telling Roka about that recently because he yeah. just finished The Wire. Uh, Generation Kill is fantastic. Oh, really good. Watch Band of Brothers, then watch Generation Kill, two entirely different yeah. stories, but both f- phenomenal. Uh, Getting On, I never watched, but it got nominated for a bunch of yeah. stuff, I remember. Uh, yeah, it was okay. Girls hard no. I liked girls. Okay, I watched the whole se- series. It, Congratulations! It hits and misses. Okay, the Golden Life never heard of it. Uh, that's a Europe okay. HBO Europe. Grace never. Uh, heard those of are Asia. Gunpowder uh, Half World. Those, These yeah, are that's all other HBO Europe. stuff. Oh, Hello Ladies, very underrated. I would highly recommend. <laughs> it was that. okay. Yeah, it was all right. Okay, Here and Now never watched. Oh no, 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 that's a okay. hard no. High maintenance, weird, uh, kind of. Interesting way of storytelling on TV, but it's going to be a no for me. I didn't see it. Uh, my mother-in-law loves it, but that she also really likes the stuff that I like Mozart in the Jungle, which I would never like. Um, How to Make It in America. Kinda, That's a no for me. Is that a no? If, you, if you're going through the whole list, it was a okay. no. Yeah. Hung, I never watched. I watched one or two, okay. and it didn't, it didn't grab me. Okay. In Treatment, I only caught a couple. It wasn't for me. Yeah. It's a very interesting storytelling device. Yeah. Uh, Insecure didn't love the first season, but I think it's gotten better. I've only watched the first. I only watched a handful in the first season, okay. but yeah, I've heard. I love Issa Rae. She is just the, yeah. the best. Uh, Jamee, Private School, yes. This the guy from Australia is oh, just amazing. Yeah, I his name. sure. Yeah, uh, the Jinx, yes. Yeah, that's definitely a watch. John Adams, hard yes. Incredible miniseries. Yes. Yeah, John from Cincinnati. I'm no. the only guy that ever watched no. it. No. Okay. No. No. Uh, Jonah from Tonga, never watched. I couldn't keep going with that guy, but he was yeah. funny. Larry Sanders show, maybe HBO's best show, uh, in my opinion. It might be the best. Uh, I mean, uh, next to Veep, I think it's the best comedy they've ever done. I agree. Last week tonight, hard yes. Every episode. Yep. The Leftovers, absolutely. I need to finish it. I okay. I dropped off in season one because it wasn't hooking me, but I've uh, with cops are in the office, all I yeah. hear about is The Leftovers. Life's Too Short, fantastic. It was funny. It was okay. funny. Uh, Little Britain, USA, no for me. No, no I, me I didn't care for it. Looking, I never watched. I didn't. I, I heard. Uh, I heard. I heard really good things about. Uh, Listen, my wh- Quantum Leap was in it for a while. Uh, uh, Scott Bakula. Scott Bakula. My friend Justin Martindale, who is he is. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very funny comedian. A gay dude couldn't recommend this lower to me. <laughs> so, uh, Luck, short lived, canceled. 
Okay. Yeah, went to the glue factory. Yeah, went Ooh. to the oh, burn. Mildred Pierce. <sighs> I, li- I I liked it. I wouldn't Did recommend you? a re. I mean, it, yeah, it was okay. fine. It was good. It was really well done. I just wouldn't recommend it to a lot of people. Okay, so I'm guessing Miss Sherlock's International Mosaic. I never watched Mr. Show. Yes. Uh, yeah, Mr. Show. If you've never seen Mr. Show, you need to watch Mr. Show. It's, it's a. Uh, yeah. It was a brilliant, brilliant before its time sort of comedy with. Every funny person you've ever liked yeah. was on that show. Yes, uh, the newsroom ebbs and flows of good. Yeah, yeah, but it's a yes. It was a it's a yeah, it's a soft yes for me. Okay. The night of one hundred percent, absolutely. It was really fantastic. Yeah. The number one ladies detective agent. Never seen it. I didn't see. I didn't see that. All one. of Kitteridge. I never watched. I didn't watch that one either. Oz. Yes. Oz is incredible. Yeah. I mean, that was before. Oof, man, that's brutal. It was a brutal show, but yeah. it was before. The best part about Oz is that half of the actors then went to Law and Order shows, yeah, yeah, yeah. so they all played criminal, like and hardened criminals, cops. and then cops. It was yeah. The Pacific is a yes, but I didn't love it as much as Band of Brothers. It was it was trying too hard to be Band of Brothers yeah. all over again. Yeah. And it didn't. There were some didn't episodes were great. Yeah. Some episodes were really good, but not all. The Pact I've never heard of. That was the HBO Europe. It says okay. Uh, Parades end again. Project Greenlight is very entertaining. I like uh, that. The, the newest season. Yeah, that was a that yeah. was a train wreck of a show. Okay, uh, and I tried watching the actual movie. No. Oh God, it was bad. Okay. Uh, Random acts of flyness. I've never seen that or heard. Just premiered recently. Okay. I think. I've okay. been Reading some articles about it. Real time with Bill Maher, an absolute yes. Yeah, yeah. Rome, very underrated, crazy expensive. Only did three seasons, but I love that show. My parents loved that show. Okay. Yeah. Room One Hundred Four. I've never watched. No, that's, that's a the Duplass, Duplass yeah. Brothers thing. I heard. I heard. I've heard it's fantastic. It's just too Rus- scary. For Russell me. Simmons presents Brave New Voices. I don't think I've ever seen that. I think that's a that's a re redo of Def Comedy Jam okay. kind of thing. Uh, Russell Simmons presents Def Comedy Jam. Yes, uh, those are all very good. Yeah. Scent. I've never seen that's Europe. Uh, yeah. Sex in the City. I never watched. Never will. I mean, I, I've seen a number of episodes, and okay. it's it's still really really. Good okay. television. It's just not necessarily my it's, cup of tea. It's not for men for men. I no, it's not. But. And I'm sure any woman would come in here and yell at us and say absolute yes. So that's that. And yeah, I get yeah, that yeah. it was a, it you was should, a you transcendent should see, show. You need to see it. I think everyone should watch yeah. at least a handful of episodes to understand what it did to the culture. Like it, it, okay. is, it, 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 it was storytelling comedic storytelling from a female yeah. perspective that we had never seen no, before. 100%. And it's, it's like, important. And it's still really funny. Yeah. It's just not something I would watch every episode of. No. Uh, qu- real quick story about Sex and the City. This is aging myself, but I was on a high school trip to New York and I saw them filming the opening credits of Sex and the City. At that time, with I didn't the know bu- it was, With the bus. With the bus and her in that pink dress. Uh, at the time, I had no idea. And I remember being there and someone was like, why are they shooting over there? And I was like, it looks like Sarah Jessica Parker. And she goes, meh, and walked <laughs> away. It was amazing. <laughs> so New York. Sharp Objects, yes. Sure. I can give you the of some of the first six episodes, you can watch the last two. Yeah, that's really that's really all you need. Show me a hero sobbed at the end of that. I couldn't get through it. You know, I tried <sighs> I watching it on it. a plane. I think yeah. that was my problem. Loved it. Silent Valley, I think, is Europe. Yep. Silicon Valley, hard yes. For sure. Six feet under, probably the best finale in the history of TV. Oh, maybe. without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. Sopranos change sure. television. Uh yeah, you can of course. Succession, I haven't gotten through, but I like it. Yeah, uh, I will finish it. Summer High Tie, yes. That's that same guy again, right? Yep. Yeah, I, I, he doesn't do anything for me. Uh, tell me you love me. I never saw. Oh, that was the one. That was the show that was famous because they showed actual penetration. Oh. Uh, it, <laughs> uh, Adam Scott. Oh. And pre. Pre uh, party down. Pre par- pre party down. Pre parks and rec. Yeah, pre parks and rec. Okay. And uh, and and Sonia Walger from uh, from Lost. Okay. I might be mispronouncing her last name. Okay. Tom uh, McFarlane Spawn. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, it's not bad. It's an animated. It's an animated version of Spawn. It's it's better than the movie. Togetherness was too much complaining. Los I, Angeles. I watched the first season, maybe. Just everybody complained the whole time. That's yeah. what the show was. Yeah. Tracy Ullman show created The Simpsons. You should watch it. Yeah. Treme. I feel like I'm one of the only people to watch that show. I loved oh, Treme. Treme was incredible. I love and 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 Ugh. if you love Bunk from the if you love Wendell Pierce in The Wire, you'll love him in Treme. He is so, uh, Wendell Pierce and uh, and and Kim Dickens. Yeah. John and, Goodman, yeah. Melissa Leo, and um, who's the other guy from The Wire? Uh, Clark oh, Peters. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. As the dad. It's, yeah. It's really it, well done. It, it was such a great show. True Blood I never watched. I don't like vampires. I don't, I don't like it. I didn't like it. Uh, True Detective season one. Yes. True Detective season two. No. No. Uh, v- season three. Can't wait. Hard yes. 
Vice, hard yes. Yeah, I don't watch enough Vice. I, ca- yeah. I catch it when I catch I it, but I don't it. I, I, I don't DVR it. Vice Principles, 100%. Oh, my God. Vice Principles was oh phenomenal. My God. Two episodes of just an amazing CD, C- TV. Vinyl, hard no. Nope. Wasteland, never watched. We Can Be Heroes, I never watched that. Westworld, no for yes, me. That's, that's yes, a hard, that's yes, a hard yes, yes on Westworld. Bad. When Shall We Kiss, never heard of it. The Wire, yes. Wyatt Cenac's uh, problem areas, I like. I've watched. I haven't. I like Wyatt Cenac. I, I haven't watched his yeah, show. Really like it. And finally, The Young Pope. That's a no for me, dog. That was a no for me on yep. Young Pope as well. So there you go. You guys wanted some recommendations? We walked you through all of HBO's ca- Go catalog. There you go. You're yeah, welcome. They're all there. So Watch we're going to end with our Emmy preview, Emmy predictions. We're not going to do an Emmy preview, but Emmy predictions. And then that I will do a special TV talk next week. It will go up on a Tuesday with our thoughts on the actual show. Yeah, they we'll make sure Emmy's, I Emmy airs, Emmy's air Monday, Monday, Monday night, the 17th, hosted by yep. Michael Che and Colin Jost yep. on NBC. Too many. Okay, uh, let, we're just going to do the six major categories. Drama, sure. comedy, drama, actor, drama, actress, comedy, actor, comedy, actress. All right. You go first. Okay. Uh, drama. What do I want to win? I always do this. What do I want yeah. to win? What do yep. I think yep. will yep. win? Yep. What do I want to win? The Americans, because I think it ended so well. What do I think will win? Handmaid's Tale. I don't think Handmaid's Tale is going to win the okay. second season. I I also want the Americans to win. Okay. I think that might go to This Is Us this year. Okay. I think this might be the year that goes back. The, the goes death. back. Yeah, I, I maybe I, I season one stronger, mm-hmm. but I think that maybe this is us pulls it, pulls okay. out the win okay. or the crown. Okay, I love crown but season two. You never know. Game of Thrones is eligible again this season. Yeah, I I my gut tells me they're going to wait, wait until final year. Yeah, they won the last year they were eligible. Yeah, but you never know. Game of Thrones is such a juggernaut; it could just sweep. For it sure. already they they won seven Creative Arts Emmys. Oh, there you go. Uh, comedy. What do I want to win? Mrs. Maisel, what do I think will win? Atlanta. And that's not, that's like yeah. a catch 22 because I love both of those shows. I love everything in this category, mm-hmm. uh, except maybe Kimmy Schmidt. I thought yeah. they kind of fell off. The first season. It's getting canceled. Yeah, it's already done. But yeah. the, fir- the first season was fantastic. Yes. Uh, I want Mrs. Maisel to win, mm-hmm. and I think it might. Okay. I think it might. Because didn't, did Atlanta win last year? I think so. Yeah, I think Maisel wins this year. Okay. Drama actor. Who do I want to win? Who do I think should win? Or think will win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want Jason Bateman to win or mm. Matthew Reese, but I have a feeling Sterling K. Brown's going to win. Yeah. He had I an mean, awesome season. He, he was. And again, wanting and thinking. Yeah. I love yeah. Sterling K. Brown. I love yeah. this whole category. But Jason Bateman and Matthew Reese in both of their shows were really transcendent. Not transcendent, but I mean, very no. much better. Than they were in the previous years they were nominated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Sterling won last year for season one. He carries that show. Mm-hmm. Milo did a great year, job this year. He's mm-hmm. nominated. Uh, I I think Ed Harris and Jeffrey Wright cancel each other out. Yes. I would love to see Matthew Reese pull out the win for the Finally. final season. It, it's so well deserved. Yeah. Uh, I think Sterling's going to win a second year in a row. Okay. okay. Claire, uh, drama actress. I love Tatiana Maslany. Maslany. I love Orphan uh, Black. It's an incredible show. It just seems so long ago. Yeah, this I, was I didn't even realize it was still eligible. Yeah. Uh, if I was going to say who I want to win, Tatiana Maslany won last year. I don't think they're going to give it, it to did? a back-to-back. They did? She did. She did? Yeah, she won an Emmy. No way. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. I think she also won the Golden I thought Elizabeth Moss won. No, I think Tatiana Maslany won. Maybe she won two years ago? She, she has won an Emmy for... Orphan Black. Oh yeah, she she won in twenty sixteen. Okay, so it would have been two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My so bad. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I think Elizabeth Moss won last year. Okay, so who do I want to win? I really want Carrie Russell to win for the Americans. Yeah. Who do I think is going to win? I think it's probably going to be Elizabeth Moss again. Uh, yeah, uh, I I think it's probably Elizabeth Moss. Uh, yeah, even my wife. My wife's a big fan of Handmaid's Tale okay. and said that the second season just was off the rails. Okay. Uh, I I really want Carrie, Carrie Russell to win. Mm-hmm. I I think I think Claire Foy is going to win. Okay. I'm going to say for Claire, the crown. I think Claire Foy. I, I think the crown might be. I think this might be the year for the crown because it's her last year okay. eligible because they've changed the cast. Yes. So I think this and and I she was incredible both seasons, but I th- I think her arc in season two was was very yeah. very strong. Okay. Comedy actor, who do I want to win? I, I listen. I love Donald Glover. I don't think he had many super funny moments this season. Yeah. Uh, who do I want to win? 
I'd love to see Larry David win for Kirby Enthusiasm because the <laughs> season was so silly. But I could also see Bill Hader winning for, for Barry. But if I was going to pick who does win, Donald Glover. Yeah, I, I, I think Glover... I think Glover can probably take the win. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to see Bill Hader. He might pick up a directing award for comedy this sure, year. Sure. I think he's also up against Donald Glover for that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, it's probably it's probably Donald Glover's year again. Yeah. Uh, though uh, though Barry was incredibly strong. Yeah. Uh, finally, comedy actress. Uh, who do I want? And who do I think? Brosnahan, Rachel Brosnahan. Yeah, it's hers. It's it's, it's hers. hers. Yeah. And and and, and unlike any performance, couldn't order. be more deserved. Correct. I think she is doing stuff in that role that no one else is doing in television. No. And it's not to knock anyone else in nope. any of the other categories. We've just seen it before. I think we the the character that Amy Sherman Palladino wrote for her and the way that she pulls it off. It's incredible. Is like nothing else. Yep. I cannot stress enough to go watch that freaking show if you haven't yet. I, I can't. Again, I've recommended like 400 times this yeah. episode. Yeah, I, I it's, it can't say it enough enough yep. times. Yep. Uh, so again, uh, Thad and I are going to do a little TV talk special after the Emmys next Tuesday. So you can tune in for that. Uh, that's it for us here on Collider TV Talk. Yeah. Uh, congratulations to everybody that won at the Creative Arts Emmy. Thad, you three people got EGOTs. Three people got EGOTs, three including got. John. The, the three got, Thank according you, to Patton, Patton, Patton Oswalt, Oswalt uh, John Legend, Tim Rice, and Andrew Lloyd Webber all got it at the exact same time Boom. when Jesus Christ Superstar Live won one of their five. Boom. Uh, Anthony Bourdain won some posthumous awards. Glow won for best stunts. That's pretty cool. Yeah, first time a woman's ever won best stunts, which was incredible. Uh, Well-deserved. Mm -hmm. uh, Tiffany Haddish and Comeback Barack both won. Comeback Barack! Uh, which also meant that Keenan Thompson got his first yes. SNL, or uh, first Emmy Award. Nicely I think done. very well-deserved. I think Keenan is an underrated star on that show. Me too. Uh, Ron Cephas Jones won for that incredible performance oh, in This Is Us. He so was robbed good. the year before. I agree. And I th I'm glad that they got, they, they got it to form this year. Me too. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's HBO's already won 17 awards. Come back, my rock. 17 uh, awards. 17 awards. Unbelievable. But Netflix got more nominations than HBO this year for the first time Whoa. in history. I can't wait for the uh, Netflix so. versus HBO Anchorman fight in the uh, parking lot of the Sony lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's it for us. Uh, Emmy special next week, yep. and then we'll be back for another TV talk. There are also on some, Friday. There, we'll be back next Friday. There's also some special. Uh, Thad and I did a, a full review of Jack Ryan season one. Uh, Roxy Strider did a full review of Ozark season two. Those are up here on the channel. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Uh, if you haven't rated us five stars or commented in the TV talk podcast feed, please do. I, iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all of it. Uh, podcast one, wherever you get it. If I gave you a button. At the Schmodown Live, <laughs> or any time in your or life. Or if you threw it and it hit you or in the eye. My bad on that one. Uh, if I threw it in the crowd and you have one, tag Jeopardy. Hashtag at Josh McCuga for Jeopardy. Uh, any viral marketing that we can do helps me become the next host of Jeopardy. But don't worry. When I am the next host of Jeopardy, I will still host TV Talk here and Clatter This, I promise you. Like Casey and JoJo said. Was that who sang that? This, uh, or was I don't that? remember that. Anyway, that's a boy band reference. Oh, I remember Casey and JoJo. I just don't remember that song. This, I uh, promise. Was that like, I don't know, whatever. If you guys are watching and you're the boy band that sang that. You could that. just do all for one. I swear. That's the one I'm talking about. By the moon and the stars Sing us out, Thad. At Thad Williams, at Josh McCuga. We'll see you guys next week. As always, put down the book, pick up the remote. <laughs>